Hello again, brothers and sisters, brethren, Church of the Living God. <coughs> Boy, neck pain goes to a shoulder. <laughs> now, in this video, brethren, sisters, <coughs> um, I'm going to be, Lord willing, answering another question about is there a specific spirit and or devil that is assigned to attack people's emotions and stuff like that or to tempt them? Is there a specific one like, here's the devil to attack your emotions, here's the devil to attack your flesh, Here's the devil to do this, to do that. Are there certain devils? Well, no. Now, there are different kinds of spirits, yes. But as far as devils attacking you and stuff like that, we're going to kind of look into this, okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. Now, this is when Jehoshaphat, and who, who is it? Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Yes. Uh, Jehoshaphat and King Ahab came together, and King Ahab called all these prophets to, whether, to ask whether or not they should go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle. And all these false prophets came in saying, go up, go up, yes, go, 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 Lord be with you and prosper you, and whatever it is you want to do. And there was one prophet by the name of Micaiah, who... Um, <laughs> who King Ahab just hated him. Why was that? Why was that? Look at verses 5. Ah, hold, hold on one second, brethren. Okay, sorry about that. Look at verse uh, 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And that's the backstory. Kind of, sorry for me kind of stumbling over that. Go to verses 19, and we will be reading on to verse 23. <laughs> And he said, this is uh, Micaiah, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that matter, on that matter. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Now, the Lord himself was not the one who was lying to these people. What does the text say? A spirit came forth and said, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Okay? 
Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets. Our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, allowed a lying spirit to go within to these prophets to deceive Ahab, to bring him on to his utter destruction. Okay? The Lord himself did not do it, but he allowed a spirit to go and do so. Okay? Okay? You with me so far? Okay? Go now to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to look at verse 1 to start, but then we are going to be reading verses 13 on to verse 23. Okay? This is after Saul said, I have set up the, I did, I did do the things of the Lord. Okay? Yay, look at uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 20. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the, Lord hath sent, uh, which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Okay, this is after that, where he disobeyed the Lord. The Lord told him, go kill everything. But he didn't. Okay, and then of course, you all know, King Saul is like, it was the people's fault. One line. Yeah, 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 okay, it was, but it was because of them. See, this is afterward, okay? 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay? Saul was rejected. Now, verses 13 on to verse 23. Then Samuel took the horn of oil, and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord capital S, came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord, also capital S, departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, with what we just read in 1 Kings chapter 22, you kind of get the picture. All right? You kind of get the picture. God allowed an evil spirit to come on to Saul. Okay? Let's continue. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player on an harp, and it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and plain, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul, and stood before him. And he loved him greatly, and he became his armor-bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. So you see, because the Lord had rejected Saul, okay, 
and given it to King David, okay, that he sent an evil spirit upon Saul. And as we saw in 1 Kings chapter 22, um, God allowed it to happen. God himself was not that evil spirit, but he allowed it to happen to him. Okay? You with me so far? Still? Okay? Good. All right. Now, with that, you have to remember, when it comes on to us, the church of the living God, okay? When it comes on to us, the church of the living God, go to Job. Go to the book of Job. Chapter 1. Job chapter 1, we will be reading verses 6 on to verse 12. Job chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 12. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught, for naught, excuse me, Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath, hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So you see, God allowed Satan to go and afflict Job. And verse 13, verse 16, verse 17, and verse 19. One, two, three, four. Just like that. Boom, 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 boom. Satan devastated Job. He was allowed to. And of course, and of course, Job, after all that stuff, one, two, three, four, one after another. Verse 20 and 21. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Something very important to note there. Okay? Something very, very important to note there. And also, let's look while we're here at uh, Job chapter 2. <coughs> Job chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. And again, there was a day when the sons of God... Uh, beg your pardon, brother. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord, and said, Skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. 
But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So, God allowed Satan to afflict Job. Satan had to have permission to do it. We note that. We see that. Right? Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. You with me so far? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 on to verse 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 on to verse 12. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and king and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. The accuser of the brethren. Okay? Right now, Satan is up there. He walks to and fro through the earth. Okay? He's really busy at the Vatican right now, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yeah, him, he himself, he's busy at the Vatican. But he is the accuser of the brethren. Okay? Devils can whisper things into your ear. The devil can arrange certain circumstances to trip you up. Absolutely he can. Absolutely he can. Of course he can, okay? If you were to read the afflictions that God allowed Satan to do unto Job, you know, he, he smoked the, uh, the doorpost, he killed things, he, uh, fire came down and burnt up his crops, he smote Job's body with uh, boils and stuff like that. So yes, Satan can do those kinds of things. And yes, Satan's devils can whisper things into your ear, can play, can try to play your emotions, can send one of his servants within your path to try to tempt you through the allure and lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the flesh, okay? Okay? Go to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah, that is within the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets, okay? Zechariah. Come on, fingers, work with me. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. To resist him. You can read on your own time um, in 2 Samuel 24 verse 1 and 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 about how Satan was allowed to tempt David to number the children of Israel to bring wrath upon the children of Israel. Okay? Or to, yeah, to bring um, wrath upon the children of Israel for uh, David counting the children of Israel, okay, about a pride. 
Because in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1, it says God. And then in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1, it says that's Satan. Okay? God allowed Satan to do that. Okay? God will allow Satan to do things unto us. He will. He will. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. If we die, we are pre we go to be ever present with the Lord. Yes, yes. But he is the accuser of the brethren. I'll give you an example. Hey, Lord, you see so and so down there? Yeah, he's he, he's really battling with loneliness and he's uh, he's having problems at home. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me send, puts like a very good looking woman to tempt him just to cross his path so he could see her and kind of lust after her and get all messed up for a little while. He can do stuff like that. Or a devil could whisper into your ear, you're looking at something online. It's like, why don't you go to this site? What, where, where did that come from? Yes. Yes. Come, come on. That can obvious. Yes, that happens. That happens. It does. But now look at verse 2. Okay? Verse 2 here in Zechariah chapter 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Very interesting, isn't it? The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee. Not this, I rebuke thee in the... No, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks, you wicked charismatics. No. The Lord rebuke thee. The Lord rebuke thee. But yes, the devil and his angels can whisper things onto you. The devil can put certain things in your path to trip you up. Absolutely he can. Absolutely he can. For you are the church of the living God. Um, he needs permission to do so. Of course. To refine us, if you will. But now, and also um, about verse 2, cross-reference that with Jude 23, okay? On your own time, all right? But now go to Luke, chapter 22. Luke, chapter 22. Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 32. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 32. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And what's interesting about this is go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 under verse 24. Okay? Oh, uh, actually, did I give you the wrong verse? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 under verse 24. Then Peter, now this is after um, that where Lord says, and upon this rock, meaning himself, I will build my church. Here's what the Catholics don't like to deal with. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. 
Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let's keep reading to the end of the chapter. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there is some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay, And that doesn't mean that there are immortals out there. No, that means specifically when our Lord Jesus Christ came in on the ass and the colt, the fall of an ass, he came into his kingdom. People were alive. That's what that's referring to, okay? But that, like, again, now look at verse 23, where he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. And in Luke chapter 22, verse uh, 31, And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Sift as wheat. Have you ever used a sifter to uh, to sift out wheat or anything, or any kind of you know flour to make it more fine? Okay, very interesting process. And of course, what happens? The Lord tells Peter, "You're going to deny me three times." And Peter's like, "No, I'm not. Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you." And then, of course. Uh, before the cock crowed three times, he denied him three times. And the Lord looked at him when he denied him the last time. And he went out and wept bitterly. He failed the Lord. And that big time. Okay? Sifting him as wheat. Because... What would have happened if Peter would not have recovered from that? Right? Satan sifted Peter there. But of course, we both know that Peter would go on to become the first pope of the Catholic Church. And the <clears throat> Beg your pardon. We know that uh, Peter would go on to be the apostle on to the circumcision and go on to be quite a man of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. But see, that he may sift you as wheat. Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Lord, well, Peter there ain't truly converted yet. Let, let me try him, okay? Let me, let, me, let me sift him. Let me throw a couple of my uh, people at him to ask him. It's like, you're one of his disciples. He said that he'll never deny you, and you even told him that he's going to, and he's like, I'll never do it. Let me sift him. Let me sift him. What would happen if Peter never recovered from that? Or went, continued to go downhill from that, right? Of course, we know that didn't happen. Of course. Get what I'm saying? But now, go to First Peter. <laughs> this is a very interesting tie-in. Very, very interesting tie-in. First Peter, chapter 5, verses 6, on to verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6, on to verse 10. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, 
casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Seeking, who, uh, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you looking for whom he may devour. Those who are weak. Stuff like that. Those who are uh, going through hardships, afflictions. Okay? Legitimate struggles. Legitimate. Not using struggle as, oh, I'm struggling while I'm giving in to my sin without any hesitation. No, no, no. Legitimate struggles. Okay? That's who the devil is going after. It's going after you and me. Okay? Yeah. But there again, we have to remember something. Okay? Without, there is not a specific devil that is there to go on your emotions or anything like that. No, no, no. No. Because we have to remember something, brethren. Go to James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Come on. James chapter 1. <clears throat> what was I writing that? Verses um, 12 on to verse... 17. James chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 17. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And he tempteth any man is to do evil. He will allow a devil to do that, not he himself, see. Right here, brother, sister. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Who does the enticing? Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts, and enticed. A devil may entice you. Absolutely. But um, hold your place in James because we're going to be looking at another part there. Uh, go to Proverbs chapter 28. Hold your place in James. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Or uh, excuse me. Proverbs chapter 25. Verse 28. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Broken down and without walls. Without any protection. You know how Paul talks about mortifying your flesh, putting down your flesh, because sin has been condemned in the flesh? Comprende? Go back to James, 
to chapter 4, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 10. James chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 10. From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. Ye cannot obtain. Ye fight and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask. And receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you see that in the temptation in the desert uh, when of Jesus when Satan came and tempted our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, um, about, you know, yeah, make this stone bread, cast yourself down. All this will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Okay? And how did uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, how did he do that? How did he resist the devil? It is written, it is written, it is written with the scripture, the sword of the spirit. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. You see, brethren, sisters, Satan is not holding a gun at your head, forcing you to look where your eyes ought not to look. If your eye offended, pluck it out. Not literally. Okay, come on. But he's not forcing you to do that. He may make an inevitable thing where you're like, oh, whoa, you know, or you're at uh, a store and, uh, beg your pardon, you two guys, okay, you're at a store. And a woman over there who is immodestly dressed is by you and you got to get something and you look and say, like, oh, yes, the devil can orchestrate that. Or if you're online and you're starting to go places online that you shouldn't, if your hand, right hand offended, cut it off. Or if you're going places you shouldn't go, going and being with people that you know you shouldn't be with, hmm? Five foot offending, cut it off, gas them from me. See? Saying ain't holding a gun to your head. Yes, the devil and his angels. Can whisper things in your ear? Absolutely, yes, he can do that. But at the end of the day, you have the choice. You have a choice, Calvin. 
You have choice. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to abstain from all appearance of evil? Or are you going to blame, or are you going to be like, the devil made me do it? Hey, we, we sin. We make mistakes. We fall. We, uh, we don't fall, excuse me. Um, we make choices. Yeah. There. We make choices. There is no such thing as falling into sin. You choose to do so. You choose to look. You choose to follow. You choose to walk. You choose. And on that, <clears throat> and on that, one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verses 15 on to verse 20. Brethren, remember, he, he has condemned sin in the flesh. Where our, while our spirit and soul are housed within this sagging skin suit, we are going to have war with the flesh, with sin, okay? Read Romans chapter 7 sometime, okay? You do that on your own time. You have the choice. What are you going to do? You cannot rightly say, oh, it's just my flesh. No, you're making an excuse. Thou art the man. Take a little accountability. Take a little responsibility. Because remember, you are accountable unto the Lord Jesus Christ and to his word. What a concept, huh? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 on to verse 20. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Think about it there, church of the living God. Other gods, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What other god are you worshiping if not the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Yourself! I will be like the Most High. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Thou, O Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the worship other gods and serve them. Now, of course, you know, this we're reading this for instruction and in righteousness. But think about that, brethren. Oh, it, it was my flesh. Oh, it was their fault. Again, you know who make excuses Lost people. Lost people make excuses. We, as the church of the living God, ought to be the very first ones to judge ourselves according to the scriptures. If you would judge yourself, 
you will not be judged. If you take action, you know, repent of things that you're messing around with. Lord, I, I, it's my fault. I, it's my fault. I chose to do this. Please have mercy on me. Please, Lord, give me what I need to have victory over myself. See? <clears throat> Let's continue. Big part. I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record against to record this, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which he, which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. What are you going to choose? The devil ain't making you do squat! Oh, it's just my flesh, it's just my flesh. Shut up. Brother, sister, if you're in sin, repent and get right with the Lord right now. Quit messing around. Stop. Do what you got to do. Okay? What, what excuse are you coming up with? What are you clinging to as an excuse? Environment, give me a break. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. You're right, I don't. What, have you no rule over your own spirit? People I live with. Are, are they literally holding a gun to your head? Making you do th things? If so, get you call the police and get the heck out of there. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying. See, at the end of the day, brethren, sisters, thou art the man. Yeah, again, devils can whisper. Manipulate circumstances, yes. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. But see, you're saved and born again. You have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost dwelling within you. And believe me, brother, sister, you're messing with something that you ought not to be a messing. He's going to let you know about it. And if there's silence when you're doing something that you know is totally contrary to the scripture, that's when you need to be like, oh, oh okay, wow, Lord. Whoa, stop. Get down on them knees of yours. Seek the Lord. Because remember, Paul talks about putting down the flesh, mortifying our flesh, to abstain from all appearance from evil. You know, it says in the scriptures, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them which turn aside. It will not cleave on to me. You have no one to blame. 
but yourself. You have no one to blame but yourself. You can't blame it on your environment. Look at that. Look at Adam and Eve. Okay? Look at that. Was the Garden of Eden, okay? They had everything they need, okay? And here, Satan tempted Eve, yes. But there again, did Satan force Eve to take the fruit of the tree and eat? Huh? 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 No, he did not. Did he force Adam to do so? <laughs> Uh, those of you married men, sometimes when um, sometimes when uh, your better half can be a little uh, <laughs> persuasive, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a poor attempt at humor. Excuse me. But there again, did Eve force Adam to eat that? No. No. It's a choice. What are you going to choose? And brethren, go to Romans chapter 3. Go to Romans chapter 3. Come on. <clears throat> oh, no, not Romans chapter 3. Excuse me. Romans chapter 6. Beg your pardon. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 23. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield your servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanks that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, being then made free from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things? Whereof ye are now shamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I didn't I purposely didn't add this in the previous video because I'm gonna use it here. Now we once you're saved, born again, you're sealed. You're not gonna lose your salvation no matter how much you screw up. But you're gonna pay such a heavy price for that. Brethren. There isn't a set devil or spirit that just works on emotions. No, no, no. no. There are spirits, uh, evil spirits, spirit of divination, so on and so on, yes. But when it comes to our temptations, again, yes, the devils can do things to entice you. But at the end of the day, it's all 
on you. It's on you. You can't blame the skin suit. You can't blame your environment. You can't blame him, her, that, the dog, the cat. You can't blame the Republicans, the Democrats. You can't blame so on and so on and so on for the way you behave, for your choices. It's a cop out. That's an excuse. And lost people make excuses. We have no excuse. We have no excuse. We have no excuse. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, or 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I do beg your pardon, brethren. Um, <laughs> very quickly. Those who have dust on the skin should not complain about the dust on the skin to those who have a sliver. Um, right now my shoulder is really, really giving me a hassle, so please beg your pardon, bear with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, little g, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. The God of this world. Who is that? Hello, bruh. Satan. Lucifer. That old devil. Okay? Go to 2 Timothy, chapter 2. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. Verses 25 and verse 26. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 on to verse 26. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Oppose themselves. You are responsible for what you do. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. You know what a snare is? And I'm not talking about the drum instrument. Snare is a rope or a trap on the ground. Something steps in there, psst, takes a whoo! Okay, that's what a snare is. Okay, any of you who have any experience in trapping know exactly what I'm talking about. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Here's a bigger question for you, brother, sister. What's a snare on to you? And what in the wide world of sports entertainment are you doing meddling around with something? That you shouldn't. What's a snare on to you? What's a snare on to you? And is something snaring you in an area where you are going that could eventually lead you to sinning? For example, are you online quite a bit? And then some kind of annoying pop-up or some kind of site you go to to look up something. And down there they have that little crawl to kind of entice you with these neck. <sighs> like, for example, the, the one YouTube video downloader 
channel is um, no longer in operation. It says it's for ma it's under maintenance. Check back in a few hours. Okay, that was three weeks ago. So um, there's uh, there are all different kind of YouTube downloader apps and sites that you can go to. The one that I uh, use to you know because I download quite a few of uh, the videos from the brethren so I can listen to them uh, with my earbuds, right? But the one that I go to now. Um, that I use now, which is really good, but it has these the grotesque little pop-ups that pop up with these things, and oh, oh, it's horrible. It's a good downloader app or downloader site. Um, I mentioned uh, to a brother of mine, Brother Alexander Hartley, about it, and I said to him, I, I'm really hesitant to send you the link because the the site itself you can download very good you know it's very quick even better than the old uh youtube video downloader channel even quicker and better than that but there are these little advertisements that come up at the bottom and it's uh okay personally that's not a temptation to me okay it vexes me yes but it's not a temptation to me and i don't know of any other uh, downloading things to get the the uh, things here off of YouTube so I can put them on my phone and listen to them later and continually okay the point is are you doing something like that and getting enticed by the things that they're putting out there is that leading you to sin that's something to consider okay that is something to consider You know, if you gotta, if you're doing, you know, studying the scriptures and looking through the scriptures, um, you know, instead of going online to find things, uh, here's a thought. Lord, show me thy truth. And just wait on him to see what he will reveal, will reveal to you. You know? So, no, there, there is not a specific spirit that just goes right after your emotions and whatnot, no. Um, the devil can entice you, can put things in your path to divert you. Devils can whisper, do things, yes, but at the end of the day, brother, sister, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. Okay? It's on you. It's on you. When you sin, when you are drawn away of your own lusts, the devil didn't make you do it. The woman thou gavest me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. No. No. And very quickly on that, John, 1 John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Verses 6 on to verse 10. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. It, it wasn't my fault. It, it, it's this. It's that. It's this. It's this. It's that. All of that. It's not a sin to me. <laughs> if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, 
then his word is not in us. And of course, Proverbs chapter 28 again. Come on, work with me. Proverbs chapter 28. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. And let's read verse 14. Happy is the man that feareth alway, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. <laughs> Aha! My beloved brother is calling me. You don't hear it because I have the, uh, I have it uh, on mute. <laughs> when you see this, brother, you, you'll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that is how I would answer that question, uh, beloved brethren. There is not a devil out there personally assigned to you or something like that that is just in charge of working on your emotions or this, that, the other thing. No, 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 no. No, devils can entice you. Yes, they can trip you up, but at the end of the day, it is upon you. Okay? It is upon you. So. I do hope to hopefully make a third video today, but we, we will see. I'm I'm still kind of working on it and praying about it because it's going to be... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's what, it, what it's maybe going to be about. So, let's pray. By your head. Lord Jesus Christ, Father, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, may you be glorified, Lord. May your word be glorified. May you be magnified, Lord. Lord, help us to win the victory over ourselves and in our flesh, that, may we, that we may walk according to your word, the standard that you have given us. For those who are in sin right now, Lord, may you give them the, your strength to overcome what they need to overcome. May they be weak, that your grace may be sufficient for them. May we be sanctified and walk in truth. May we abstain from all appearance from, of evil and be sanctified and live in accordance with your word. Strengthen the weak, Lord. And those who resist you, May you act swiftly upon them. And uh, Lord, thank you for this day. Bless you, praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, Father. And in Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. I love you, brethren, sisters. Thank you for watching if you do, and I will see you in the next video.